After hours of walking, the two took a break under the shade of a tree. The doctor used his power of fire conjuring to create a small stove. He took some food from his backpack and cooked it. The otter snail looked on with interest, twitching at the aroma of the cooking food. The doctor then rested, feeling the fatigue set in as the hormone's effects began to dissipate. Even though he'd only been walked for a few hours, it was like they'd been walking for days. Closing his eyes, he felt the warmth of the sun on his face. The companion snapped him to attention. You mustn't sleep. The doctor understood, and so they moved onward. Reaching the edge of the swamp, the doctor began to feel apprehensive. Not sure what dangers waited in the murky waters, he feared this was a mistake. The otter snail sensed the doctor's hesitation and nudged him with its nose. We are here, it announced. The leech is somewhere beyond. The doctor nodded and his apprehension slowly dissipated. He took a deep breath and stepped into the swamp. What happens after this? He asked the otter snail. That is for you to decide, doctor. With the leech's power, you will have abilities beyond those of any human, but with great power. They held each other's gaze. As the final traces of the hormone lingered, the otter snail began to fade. Go under, it said, the words echoing repeatedly into infinity in the doctor's mind. The doctor, now alone, slipped his head into the murky depths, ready to receive the leech. Made with brain rip. Fully submerged in the swamp, the doctor felt a sudden and sharp pinch, followed by a slimy sensation as the leech wriggled its way up his nostril. He gasped and coughed, trying to expel the creature, but it had latched onto his pineal gland and was already intoxicated with his hormones. A wave of nausea overcame him and tears welled up in his eyes. But then something else happened. A sudden surge of energy that coursed through his body, as if his veins were filled with a charged liquid. The doctor felt a rush of excitement and pleasure, a sensation that he could only describe as power. As the hormones took over, the doctor felt an almost electric charge coursing through his limbs. He could hear his pulse racing in his ears and see the world around him in vivid colors and shapes. His skin prickled with excitement and he felt as if he could do anything he wanted. The magic within him surged and flowed almost too much to contain. The doctor's muscles tensed and he braced himself for what was to come next. With a sudden burst of force, he broke out of the swamp and levitated into the air, pulsating with energy. Made with brain rip. The doctor's body continued to levitate in the air as he started to feel the effects of the shape-shifting hormone take over. At first, he felt his skin ripple and twist as if it were turning into a writhing mass of snakes. He couldn't see his own reflection, but he knew he was changing into something else. The transformations were so swift that he couldn't keep track, but he could feel the different limbs and appendages emerging from his body. As he spiraled higher, the doctor's senses were heightened. He could hear the rustling of leaves, the sound of bird calls, and see the flicker of fireflies as he flew by. It was as if he had tapped into unlimited power that had been dormant within him. Suddenly, his perceptions shifted again and he saw flashes of images in his mind, like a series of memories from different beings. One moment, he was a dragon, his body made of scales and spines glowing in the dim light of the moon. The next, he was an octopus with long, writhing tentacles that wrapped around his own body, slick and slimy. Then came the moments of hybrid creatures, impossible creatures, melded and twisted in orgiastic union. His body transformed into terrible and beautiful creatures, where anatomy ceased to have meaning and ideas of beauty taboo and grotesque melded. Not only did he shift into these animals, but he felt their desires, their lusts, and their hungers. Made with brain rip. The carnal shape-shifting was overwhelming yet intoxicating, and the doctor was lost in a feverish dance of transformation. He felt the chaotic and orgiastic energy of it all, the blinding pulses of light and shadow as he morphed into each beast. 
It was like being overtaken by a hurricane, an unstoppable force that swept over him, consuming him. He reveled in it, his body shifting and twisting, each new form more wild and bizarre than the last. In all this, he realized that a seed had been planted by the leech, one of excess and insatiable hedonism. The transformations eventually came to a halt, and the doctor felt himself back to his human form. But something was different. He felt complete, as if he had reached a level of understanding that had previously been beyond his reach. He looked around and saw an all-consuming darkness that spread far and wide. It was as if nothing existed beyond this space. And with a wave of his hand, flickers of starlight appeared. As he gazed upon the stars streaming from his fingertips, he heard the sound of something moving in the darkness. It sounded like slithering, a kind of slimy sucking sound that echoed all around him. The doctor's attention was immediately drawn to the motion, and he set his sights on the source of the noise. Made with brain rip. As the doctor approached, the darkness started to dissipate, revealing a massive mass of wriggling creatures. Each was morphing into another in an endless Ouroboros, devouring and mating with each other as they twisted and turned in a never-ending cycle. Every now and then, a galaxy emerged from their writhing contortions, sparkles of starlight that seemed to cascade in solemn respite. He stood transfixed, watching the sea of creatures transform and multiply. It was a sight beyond comprehension, and he felt himself drawn in by the irresistible attraction of the shifting mass. Yacht, the omnipotent pumpkin-headed being, had set his plan in motion. The doctor had become too insatiable, too consumed by his hunger. He was about to become yet another addition to the infinite metamorphosing orgy. Desperately, the doctor tried to escape, but he was paralyzed, trapped in the morass of twisted bodies. He watched as they covered him one by one, sealing him into their midst. The endless undulation soon became too much for him to bear, and he felt his limbs start to splinter into the sea of flesh and limbs. He screamed in agony as his mind shattered and he was lost forever in the turbulent orgy of metamorphosing beings with no sense of before or after, only the eternal now. Made with brain rip. Dr. Hastings felt the crushing grip of a hand around his head, the icy, cold fingers piercing into his eye sockets as if they were searching for something he held deep within his skull. It was Yot. As Yote's grip tightened, the doctor couldn't breathe. The crushing strength was unbearable and inescapable. His head jerked backwards violently as if an invisible force was pulling him down. He saw himself falling from a great height so rapidly that everything around him was a blur. Terrified, he tried to scream, but his voice was ripped away, leaving him in complete silence. The doctor's descent was so swift that he barely had time to realize what was happening. His head collided with the ground and the impact was colossal. His skull cracked open, the blood pooled around the fragments and the leech was ejected. As the leech floated into the sky, the doctor's mouth spewed out the ends of galaxies as if the universe was escaping from deep within him. To an observer, it would appear the doctor had fallen from a tree, smashing his head upon a rock his eyes plucked away by a raven and his tongue devoured by a jackal. Yot strolled up to the devastated corpse, retrieving a single silver coin from the doctor's bloody mouth. Yot's grin stretched across his pumpkin head as he pocketed the prize and wandered away into the emptiness, leaving the broken man behind. It was all over, the doctor's life extinguished in a moment. Made with brain rip. <laughs> 